Hello everyone, welcome back. So we have looked at the two major statements that appear in your published round, namely the income statement and the statement of financial position. And you've heard me constantly saying that it is for any stakeholder who's interested in knowing the financial situation of the company to simply take up these published accounts and do some checks and balance, run some, or run some of their own analysis to figure out what the company is doing from their perspective. And that's where I want to discuss the users of these published accounts. Who are the stakeholders that are interested in these published accounts and why are they interested in it? So if you look at it, if you think about it really, if you think of a government, they will charge you taxes or your subsidies based on the amount of profit that the company is making. Where do you find out how much a company is making a profit? Within the income statement. So that's where the government has an interest in what the published accounts look like for any company. Secondly, the shareholders, right? In, uh, investors who are potentially uh, uh, your shareholders or anyone who is currently your shareholders, they would all want to know if the company is being profitable or not. If it is, of course, you'll bring in more, uh, more uh, shareholders, you'll be able to raise more capital, your company will be more attractive. However, if you become a loss-making company, then you will have the chance of even your current shareholders selling the shares and leaving for somewhere else. Then you have your suppliers. The suppliers provide you raw material of all sorts, and of course, they want to be paid in cash. They want to find out if your cash position is good enough for them to be paid immediately. If they look at your income, and your, if they look at your SOFP and find out that your cash position, cash position is not so good, then I think it will discourage them from sending you more supplies because they wouldn't be guaranteed their payment immediately. Then you have your managers and all managers want to prove that they're doing a good job and they're improving the business year on year. And if you take these income statements as if we compare one year from the other as a manager, then maybe you can find ways of improving, maybe cut costs on the direct cost side or maybe reduce your rent or some way or other where you can improve the overall performance of the company, find ways to reduce the cost, increase the profit. That's something that the managers can do by looking at the statements. You also have your competitors. Of course, you want to keep a close eye on what your biggest rivals are doing so you can compare their sales to yours, their profit to yours, their entire structure to your structure, and maybe learn a thing or two from the way they're running their business. And finally, you have your banks, right? Any banks or any lenders would only give you money if you have the profit to pay the interest that they're going to charge you. So it gives them the confidence to put up the loan once they see these published accounts. So different stakeholders have different purposes of looking at the same statement. It's the same income statement. It's the same SOFP. It's just different people are looking at it from a different perspective for different results. So in order to further analyze the content that is presented within your published accounts, stakeholders go through a process of ratio analysis. Okay, Publish accounts and ratio analysis go hand in hand. They're like jam and butter, petrol and car. I guess you've got electric cars now, but energy and car. So whenever you see published accounts, you know that there's going to be a discussion on ratios because ratios shed a little insight into what really is happening underneath all the numbers that are being provided in your in income and statement of financial position. So we're gonna look at profitability ratios first as the first category of ratios. And as the name suggests, it will show you the profitability aspect of a business, meaning are they even able to make any profits? How are they making the profit? What's the structure like? That's what profitability ratios help us to figure out. And we're gonna look at two profitability ratios, first of which is called your gross profit margin. Okay? Now you'll remember your gross profit from the income statement that we looked at. You deduct, you, your income statement starts with revenue, you deduct your cost of sales, which are your direct costs, and once you deduct cost of sales from revenue, it leads you to your first profit checkpoint, which was called your gross profit, right? Now, gross profit margin is the ratio used on that gross profit. 
and the ratio or the formula goes like this gross profit margin equals gross profit divided by revenue and this is always multiplied by 100 okay gross profit upon revenue multiplied by 100 why because this is a percentage okay remember that gross profit margin is always a percentage okay now i'm going to tell you a trick here about remembering this formula whenever you get a question on margin there's three parts to this formula right numerator denominator and multiply by 100 since this is a percentage a margin is always multiplied by 100 so this goes without saying every time Whenever they ask you to calculate margin, a margin is always equated with the revenue of the company or the sales. So whenever there's a question on margin, the gross profit margin, that's what they've asked you here, the denominator will always be revenue or sales. It will always be multiplied by 100. The big clue in the question is that they've given you the name of gross profit here, gross profit margin. If they've asked you for gross profit margin, you take gross profit in the numerator. So gross profit margin becomes gross profit divided by revenue into 100. Okay, remember that. So what essentially are we doing in this formula is that we are trying to compare the gross profit of the company with the revenue of the company and see what percentage of revenue is left, right? And that's what I've tried to explain here that it compares gross profit with the sales figures that we improve our profit, were we able to improve our sales, reduce it, whatever happened is what gross profit margin will tell us. And remember this thing about all margins, gross profit or otherwise, that a higher percentage is always better. Of course, any company, even you would want more profit, right? So more profit, a higher profit margin, a higher gross profit margin will always be better. So 5% is better than 2%, 10% is better than 5%. A higher percentage is always preferred, which simply means that you are not spending so much on costs and actually you are saving up your money in terms of profits. Just a final word on gross profit margin is that there's two ways to improve gross profit margin. And this is a question that often you get asked in exams. What are, how can I improve the gross profit margin? The only two ways is either I reduce my costs yeah, if it costs me less, then I have more profit remaining, right? Of course, that makes sense. Or if I can sell more. By increasing my turnover, if I sell more, I make more profit. Or if I reduce my cost. Of course, I'm talking about direct costs here because you remember from our income statement, we've only deducted the direct cost by the time we've calculated gross profit. So there's two ways to improve your gross profit. Higher profit is higher percentage is always preferred. The second of your profitability ratios is called your operating profit margin. And similar to the gross profit margin formula, two of the three parts of the formula will remain the same, meaning that this will be multiplied by 100. Of course, that will be divided by revenue. And since they've asked you about operating profit margin, you're gonna take operating profit in the numerator. Here, if it's gross profit, here it's operating profit. The other parts about the formula remain exactly the same. And the logic remains the same as well. <coughs> that in this situation, the company is trying to compare the operating profit with the sales. That's what we see here, operating profit with revenue. And even when it comes to operating profit margin, a higher percentage is preferred, right? More, per more profit is always preferred by the company. Now, how do you improve your operating profit margin? The same way you were trying to improve your gross profit margin. One, you try to reduce your indirect costs or your overhead costs that we saw appear in your income statement. Or if you can find a way to increase your gross profit. How do you increase your gross profit? We've already discussed that here by doing all of this. So, two different ways of having a more in-depth analysis of what the profitability situation of a firm is like by simply using the gross profit margin and the operating profit margin.
Right, so here's an illustration of how you would attempt to question on margins. Now the first of our pro formulas was the gross profit margin, where you take gross profit, you divide it by revenue, multiplied by 100. So the first thing obviously is locating these numbers on your income statement. We see the revenue as the first entry here of 3060. And then you're also given the gross profit here of 1220. All I need to do is simply plug this into my formula. So one, two, two, zero, divided by three, zero, six, zero. I multiply that by 100. And this tells me that I will have a gross profit margin of 39.87%. Okay, simple as that. Nothing fancy, you simply take the formula, plug it in, find the answer, 39.87%. Now what this simply is telling me is that after you've paid your cost of sales of 1840, the company still has 39.87% of its revenue left for the rest of its operations. Okay, it's got 1220 remaining, that's 39.87% of my starting revenue of 3060. Then you may be asked to calculate the operating profit margin. For that, we already have the revenue. We need to now locate the operating profit, which is given right here, value of 640. I simply plug this into my formula here. This becomes 640 divided by 3060 and this will also be multiplied by 100 since margins are always multiplied by 100 there are a percentage 640 divided by 3060 this gives me total of 20.9 percent okay 20.9 percent this means that you had a revenue of 3060, you paid your direct cost, then you paid your indirect cost, and the money that you have remaining, 640, is 20.9 or almost 21% of my starting revenue. So this is the amount that I have remaining now for the rest of my obligations to be fulfilled when I have to pay my stakeholders. So that's just how you would have to solve a question on margins.